Hi guys, uh, let's start the tire contact patch dynamic part 1. Uh, contents will be quiz, effective rolling radius and uh, wheel speed review, uh, various types of attractive resistance, uh, longitudinal sleep and the rolling resistance, and conclusion. As usual, I prepared the quiz for you. Uh, what is the wrong statement about the longitudinal sleep? Uh, number 1. Longitudinal slip occurs uh, when the vehicle accelerates. Number two, longitudinal slip occurs uh, when the vehicle uh, stops standing still. Number three, longitudinal slip occurs when the vehicle breaks. In the previous video, titled as per Perfect Car Longitudinal Slip, I will explain the uh, loaded wheel radius, effective wheel radius, and unloaded wheel radius. I hope you can perfectly remember uh, those explanations. I explained this graph which is describing the longitudinal friction coefficient as a function of longitudinal slip lambda. Uh, mu sub p is peak friction coefficient which is similar to static friction coefficient and the mu sub k is the kinetic friction coefficient. Uh, uh, traction force will be maximized at the peak friction coefficient. If uh, the traction force is big enough to overcome the peak friction force, a uh, wheel spin happens without a longitudinal movement of the wheel. On the basis of that previous explanation on the, on the effective rolling radius, let's think about an ideal case. Let's assume that uh, there is uh, no uh, tractable resistance. In this case, if the wheel and the rail are hard enough not to permit any deformation on them, uh, there are no deformation at the wheel and the rail. And also, uh, there are no hysteresis cycle. And every rolling radius has the same value here. Uh, therefore, we don't need to fuel the vehicle uh, to overcome the hysteresis damping and the tractable resistance. The vehicle will continue its constant speed forever. But in the real world, uh, both of the tire and the road are deformed. Uh, during the rotation, undeformed part continuously come into the contact patch uh, with deformation and then uh, leave the contact patch and then recover its undeformed shape. In that process, the energy for deformation being consumed in the preceding part of contact patch is not completely recovered in the latter part of tire contact patch because of the damping. I explained in the previous video titled as Tire Contact Patch Static 1. Uh, there are various types of attractive resistance types. Uh, rolling resistance, air drag, grade resistance, inertia resistance. I will explain all the types one by one later. Uh, for now, uh, we just uh, know that all the tractable resistance is intrinsically related to the longitudinal slip because we need drive torque to overcome the tractable resistance. Uh, various types of rolling resistance are related to uh, following factors. As for the material and dimension, uh, we have vehicle speed, tire size, tire structure, tire wear, operating temperature of tire, vertical load and inflation pleasure, a longitudinal and lateral force sliding between a road and wheel. As for the road condition, a dry or wet, snow, soft or hard, and aerodynamic drag on the wheel disc, friction in the hub bearing, side slip angle, camber angle, etc. 
For the simplicity, uh, let's assume a road is hard enough uh, not to permit any deformation. Uh, therefore, road deformation is equal to zero, and also uh, there are no spring back of the road. Hard asphalt and concrete have the similar condition to that. Now, we can focus on only tire deformation. The normal stress distribution is symmetric with respect to YZ plane in the standstill tire. With respect to the plane YZ, the normal stress distribution has the same quantity in both proceeding and the following contact patch. The acting line of a resultant force FZ is located at the center of tire contact patch. Uh, but uh, when tire is rolling, uh, various types of rolling resistance in the previous slide are activated in the tire. Therefore, normal stress distribution shape uh, changes to asymmetric one as shown in the left picture. Uh, with respect to the plane YZ, the normal stress distribution has different quantity in proceeding and the following contact patch uh, respectively. Uh, due to the rolling resistance, uh, the resultant force of proceeding part of tire contact patch is bigger than that of the following part. Uh, therefore, uh, the acting line of resultant force FZ uh, for total normal stress distribution uh, moves to the proceeding part of tire. To maintain the constant vehicle speed, a vehicle needs some pulling force. Is there a longitudinal slip in the constant speed? The traction uh, cannot happen if driving force uh, does not overcome rolling resistance. All the driving force is used up to overcome the rolling resistance when the vehicle drives at constant speed. Uh, no force is available for traction. Uh, then there is a small longitudinal slip uh, which is ignored in the practical application. Uh, there is a no longitudinal slip if the beaker is rolling at the constant speed without rolling resistance. We call it a perfect free rolling uh, which is impossible in the real world. A definition of a free rolling condition in which a longitudinal slip equals to zero uh, can be summarized as follows. A wheel is rolling freely at the constant speed on the flat level load and on the straight line without applying a driving or a braking torque without all the components of a slip and finally, relatively small pulling force to overcome uh, the tire rolling resistance and a side force and self-aligning torque related to uh, the not completely symmetric structure of a tire. Uh, the concept of a longitudinal slip uh, can be expressed in this picture over various conditions. Horizontal red line here represents the given constant speed of free rolling condition uh, with a small pulling force to overcome a rolling resistance. Uh, without a pulling force, the beaker is naturally decelerated in this direction uh, because of rolling resistance uh, without braking force. In other words, a beaker costs and slows down. If we apply the brake torque on the way of a beaker's costing, uh, a brake, brake slip is produced uh, from here in this deceleration region. A brake slip happens with brake torque and the drive slip happens with drive torque in the acceleration region. Uh, let's hit the answer to the quiz. 
What is the wrong statement about the longitudinal slip? The answer is number two. Longitudinal slip occurs even when the vehicle stops standstill. Here we have the conclusion. Uh, there are four kinds of attractive resistance. Uh, tire hysteresis is a main factor producing the rolling resistance. Resultant vertical force increases in proceeding part and decreases in the following parts in the tire contact patch. Uh, therefore, total resultant force acts like braking force. Traction cannot happen if driving force cannot overcome rolling resistance. A vehicle needs additional drive torque or pulling force to maintain the constant speed because of rolling resistance. A free rolling condition with longitudinal slip equal to zero is defined as a drive at constant speed with relatively small pulling force to overcome rolling resistance. On the straight flat rubber load, uh, without uh, wheel torque and all the slip components. If you watch the previous videos, uh, you can easily understand the upcoming videos. I explain the tire stiffness of radial and bias tire respectively. Also, I explain the normal stress in the tire contact patch when the tire is standstill on the level load. Recently, I explain the tire stiffness depending on various its degree of freedoms. The next video will be the tire contact patch. Uh, dynamic part 2 and I will explain uh, stress distribution and the longitudinal slip speed. Uh, see you next video. Goodbye guys.